hopefully our derivative skills are good because we're going to need them on this page. We'll see how good they are. The next thing we have to do is to learn to take derivatives with respect to time. For each of the following formulas, identify the formula. That just means like recognize what, what the formula is for. And then take the derivative with respect to time. So that means instead of d dx, we're going to do d dt. So the rules are the same, but we will have to worry about uh, chain rule a lot. I will do the first three examples, and then you will do the others on your own. Well, we'll see. Um, so I don't want to write out what that is, but you just tell me what's that first equation. Identify it. A equals pi r squared. A of a circle. So let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. So on the left, derivative of a would be dA dt. There's not much I can do with that. How about the derivative of pi r squared? I don't have to do the product rule. That's a good question. But pi is a constant, so I don't have to do the product rule. But r is not a constant. Bring the two down. Two pi r. Continue. There's more to it. The r dt. Yeah, if that was y squared, it would be 2 pi y dy dt. Oh. Or if we were doing it with respect to x, it'd be 2 pi y dy dx. So the rules are still the same, it's just the letters are different. Okay. Connor? So pi is a constant, why does it make a constant? Like, 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 because it's attached to it. You can do the product rule with, with pi being f and r squared being g, and then the derivative of f is 0. And then you hold on to the pi, and the derivative of g is 2r dr dt. So that's kind of the long way around, but that proves how it works. That proves the shortcut. Uh, it's just like if that was like 3x squared, you just put 2 in front of it. It's exactly, exactly. If that was 3r squared, it ended up being 6r. So you treat the pi or an e or a 7 or a 4 thirds, it's all the same. You treat them all the same. All right, number two. Do you know what uh, formula that is? Pi r squared h? Especially with a v on there. <laughs> volume. Volume of what? Look at, look at the units, or look at the variables, and see if you can figure out. Cylinder. cylinder. Pi r squared would be the bottom circle, and then you multiply by the height, you get the volume. Uh, this one is going to be a a product rule problem. V D T equals oh man should I come out to the side on this one F prime G prime so f prime, well, we just did f, we just did pi r squared, right? That derivative is 2 pi r dr dt. What about the derivative of g? One is sort of the answer. One times dh dt. So dv dt then is f times g prime, so pi r squared dh dt, plus g times f prime, 2 pi r dr dt. See if we can make a little bit of sense of that. This means that the volume is changing. 
how fast the volume is changing depends on a whole bunch of things. Depends on how fast the height is changing, right? If you've got a cylinder and the height is getting bigger, well, then the volume is getting bigger. If you have a cylinder and the radius is getting bigger, dr dt, well, then the volume is getting bigger. And if you had something really complicated where they were both getting bigger, well, it makes sense that those effects would add up, right? If, you're, if your height is increasing and your radius is increasing on some cylinder, then the volume is increasing at some extra amount governed by that formula. So that's how we maybe make sense of this. Number three, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What's that for? That's Pythagorean theorem. We use that one a lot in this unit. There's some famous, famous, calculus famous um, problems that use that. Uh, let's see, derivative of a squared. Good. <laughs> chain rule, chain rule, chain rule. 2a da dt plus. <laughs> yes, equals. Mm -hmm. If we have a right triangle where stuff is changing, the hypotenuse would be changing. It would, it would depend on how each leg is changing. And if they were both growing, then it makes sense that the hypotenuse would be growing. Um, I really don't want to do all of these. Let's do, let's do this one, because this one looks ugly. Do you know what formula that's for? It is area. S is surface area here. It's not a sphere. A s pi r squared is like a circle, but there's two of them. So can you think of a shape that has two circles as part of its surface? A cylinder. So there's the two circles at the ends. 2 pi r h is what's called the lateral surface area, way back to geometry. ds dt equals, uh-oh, i got an f and a g thing here. Product rule in place or no, write it out. Write it out. So out to the side. f prime would be 2 pi dr dt. And g prime would be dh dt. Nothing at all wrong with writing it out. If it's kind of complicated at all, write it out. If it's simple, then maybe you can do it kind of on the fly. So 2 pi r, that's f, times g prime, plus h times f prime, 2 pi dr dt, plus, don't forget this piece of it, What's the derivative of 2 pi r squared? 4 pi r dr dt. Good. 4 pi r dr dt. So the surface area is changing <laughs> based on all of this stuff. Now, a lot of times for us, we're going to hold something constant, and that means that like if, the, if h isn't changing, then dh dt would be 0 because dh dt is how fast is it changing. So on a lot of these problems that we do, something's going to be 0 to simplify the problem, which makes life a little easier. All right, the rest of these we've kind of done. You could do 5, you could do 6, 7, 8 would be product rule, 9 is pretty straightforward. I don't see that there's anything else crazy. Um, actually, let's do 13. It's not really crazy, but the 6 squared looks weird. So what's the derivative of L squared? 2L dl dt. You guys are getting good at this. 
What's the derivative of 6 squared? Why 0? Because it's a constant. So it like fools you with the power, like, oh, power rule. Bring the 2 down. 6 squared is a constant. The power rule still works. Out to the side, 2 times 6 to the first times the derivative of 6 dt. But derivative of 6, that's 0. So yeah, it's 0. Because 6 squared is a constant. And then 2h dh dt. So that constant was the only thing I wanted to make sure we were careful about in that one. Because it looks weird as a 6 squared. That's the calculus part of what we're going to do today. The rest is reading carefully, plugging things in the right place, because you're going to end up with, like look back at number four, ds dt is something you might know, r, dh dt, h, and dr dt. So there could be like five numbers they give you on number four. Well, they give you four and ask for you to solve for the fifth. So it's a whole lot of reading and a whole lot of being careful. All right, flip the page. Related rates, example one. Suppose y equals 5x squared minus 6x plus 2. Find dy dt when x equals 4, given that dx dt equals 2 when x equals 4. That's a lot of information. Well, let's slow down. Let's find dy dt and then figure out how the rest of this stuff works. In fact, why don't you find dy dt? You can do that. Find dy dt. Does that look good for dy dt? 10x dx dt minus 6 dx dt, and the 2 would go away. Now, let's look what it gives us. Find dy dt. OK, so here's what I'm looking for. If I want to solve for that, it better give me everything else, or else I don't have enough information. When x equals 4, OK, so we know what x is. Given that dx dt equals 2, OK, so I know what dx dt is. So now it's just a matter of being super careful to plug everything in in the right spot. That's a funny look on your face. Yeah. You're okay with this? Yes. So now all I need to do is plug in what it gives me. It said x is 4, so 4 goes in for x. dx dt is 2. So oh, times oh, 2. Okay, okay. Minus 6 times 2. And hey, in the spirit of safe stops, we're done. Maybe this is obvious, but that's on the easier end of these type of problems. But they all share that in common, that you take a derivative, they give you enough, you just have to be able to interpret what they're giving you, plug it in, and solve for your answer. Now, here's some steps that will help, because most of these are word problems. Draw a figure if possible, right? That's like math from elementary school. Like draw a picture. It help, helps you solve it. Number two, assign variables. Because sometimes we, we ran into this with the, um, the height of the water in the tank problem uh, yesterday or I guess that was Wednesday for you guys, and it was like, oh, do we use L or H or WL for water level? Like, well, it, it doesn't matter, but sometimes you do need to assign a variable, like pick something, so that you can work the problem. Restate the problem using, this really just means like translate to calculus. That's what step two means. Like take all the math, take all the English words they give you and change it all into numbers and formulas and variables and equations. Like make it a math problem instead of a word problem. Find an equation that relates to variables. Um, usually this is the, the easy step, right? If it's talking about the volume of a cone, well, you use the volume of a cone. It's talking about the area of a circle, well, use the area of a circle. You don't know the volume of a cone, do you? We will give you ones that are anything more than like area of a circle, area of a square. Like you, we'll give you what you know. I, if I remember right, I think volume of a cone is one of the ones on the test. But it tells you 
hey, remember, volume of a cone is this, and then here's the rest of the problem. And the AP test is like that. They'll, they, beyond the most basic, they give you what you need. Differentiate with respect to time. We just did a bunch of those together. And then step five is substitute. Like put in the stuff and find what you're looking for. But the, the big step is, uh, I guess, step two. Like how to, how to make sense of the problem, how to make calculus sense of the problem. All right, now this example, they're not all going to be like this, but this one like assigns you know, a space for each step. So we'll go really slow through this example. And you'll get to where you'll kind of just blow through these steps and maybe not even think about the steps. A pebble is dropped into a calm pond, causing ripples in the shape of concentric circles. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one feet per second. And the radius is four. Find the rate at which the area of the disturbed water is changing. Whoa, that's a paragraph to explain what's going on here. Draw a picture. Okay, I can do that. The circle has some radius. We picked this as a first example because I think you're probably familiar with this. You've all thrown a rock in the pond and watched the circle get bigger as the, as the wave um, propagates, I think is the fancy word there, through the water. So the radius is increasing, and obviously if the radius is getting bigger, then the area is getting bigger. And we're trying to figure out that relationship for this situation. Assign variables and restate the problem. Again, step two is translate. Like make it a math problem instead of a word problem. So let's translate all the stuff it gives us into variables, numbers, equations, so the radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one feet per second. What does that mean? Well, something's one feet per second. I can get that far. Okay, that is a velocity. But what about in terms of variables? That would be r. It's related to slope. This is what we did um, at the end of Wednesday when we just we took these statements and translated them into math. The R on the right track, it, it's the change in R with respect to time. So we translated that. The RDT is one foot per second. So every second, the radius is growing by a foot. When the radius is 4, okay, I could do that one. When r equals 4, find the rate at which the area of the disturbed water is changing. What's that mean in terms of calculus variables? What's What am I trying to find? The ADT. translated this from a whole bunch of words to a whole bunch of math. Step three, find an equation that relates the variables. Well, area of a circle and radius, I know that one, pi r squared. If necessary, we'll probably save this for Monday because this introduces a, another level of difficulty that we don't really want to do yet. Find a relationship among the variables that lets you eliminate one variable. That doesn't apply to this one, so we're not worried about that yet. Will we get like, the like, sheets, like the um, formula sheets? Right? We'll give you in the problem if you need it. Well, I mean, we're not going to give you a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm not going to give you the area of a circle, but the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a cone, surface area of a cylinder, surface area of a cone, like surface area of a sphere, anything that's like, whoa, we haven't used that in forever. We expect, I don't know, I guess you don't know where the line is, but you need to know area of a circle, area of a square, Pythagorean theorem. That's probably about it. Right. But we give it to you within the problem. It makes it even easier. 
Differentiate with respect to time. We probably already did this somewhere back there. So dA dt equals 2 pi r dr dt. And we're trying to find dA dt. So if we can, if we know all the other stuff, we should be good. Well, when r is 4, so we know r, dr dt gave us that. Uh, let's be careful with units for this one. Sometimes you're going to be lazy with units, and that's okay. Let's be careful with units on this one. So 2 pi r is 4. Ooh, that was kind of lazy of me up here. 4 feet. The rdt is 1 foot per second. So that would be 8 pi feet squared. Feet times feet is feet squared per second. Does that unit make sense for this problem? Yeah, area per time. The area is changing with respect to time. So you can do the unit kind of the, that's the straightforward way. The other way is, well, look at my answer. If I'm looking for dA dt, then I know the units ahead of time are going to be feet squared per second. And so I think once people get going on these, they drop the units while they're working the problem, and they just use sort of the answer to know what the units are supposed to be at the end. That's completely okay, but if you do it the long way, it does provide a check as you go. Thirteen. Wait, not thirteen. I was looking at thirteen. Example, whatever number this is. A thirteen-foot ladder is leaning against a wall. Suppose that the base of the ladder this is the uh, calculus famous question I was referring to earlier. Suppose that the base of the ladder slides away from the wall at a constant rate of three feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the base of the ladder is, 15, is five feet from the wall? I know, it's like, what? There's 40 different variables in there. Draw a picture. Super important in the picture that you only label things with numbers that are constant. So some of this stuff is changing. If it's changing, don't label it with the number because then you're going to be stuck with that and you're, you're going to mess up. The ladder, the length of the ladder is not changing. So I can put 13 on that. It's a 13 foot long ladder. As it slides down the wall, the length of the ladder doesn't change. It's not one of those like collapsible ladders. That'd be a different problem. Suppose that the base of the ladder slides away from the wall at a constant rate of three feet per second. All right, well, we need to assign some variables here so that we can talk about what this base sliding away means. So what equation is, is going on here? Pythagorean theorem. So I think I'm going to put a squared, or think about a squared plus b squared equals c squared. C is fixed. I mean, it's moving, but the length of C is fixed. A and B are changing. B is getting shorter and A is getting longer because the base of the ladder slides away from the wall. Oh, so dA dt is 3 because A is changing. So A is that distance. As the base slides away, A is getting bigger, 3 feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So what are we looking for? Find not B, because B would be the length. How fast is it sliding down the wall? So what rate is it? So we're looking for DB, DT. When? base of the ladder is five feet from the wall. So when 
What's 5 when a equals 5? The top of the ladder is sliding down the wall. So that would be this distance is changing. The ladder is the 13, the hypotenuse. So why would the b be Well, when it slides down to here, b is now smaller than it was. All right, an equation, we kind of said that already, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's take its derivative. We did this one already as well. 2a dA dt plus 2b dB dt equals 2c dC dt. And let's see, we're trying to find dB dt, which means we need to know everybody else. So let's start plugging in and see if we have all the information that we need. A is 5, dA dt is 3, 2 times B. I don't know B. Kind of know B. They didn't tell me what B is. Where'd you get 12 from? You're right. Oh, is that what you were trying to say? It's one of them triangles, the 5, 12, 13. Yeah. So B is 12. Now be careful, B isn't always 12. It's just when A is 5, then B is 12. DB, DT is what we're looking for. 2 times C is, C is 13. It's not changing. What's DC, DT? Zero. Why is it zero? Because it's a constant. It's not changing. So that whole thing became zero. So that's kind of nice. That happens a lot on these problems. They sort of rig them so that something is zero to make the algebra a little easier. It doesn't really change the calculus. It just makes the algebra a little bit. DC dt means how fast is C changing? Oh, it's, not changing. it's not changing. So let's see if I can do all the algebra in one step. That would be, oh, how about we say stop. Negative 2 times 5 times 3 divided by 2 times 12. Whatever that is. Although I need to put units on there. Now, I did the thing that I said we were going to do. And that is, I ignored all the units while we worked the problem. And then when I get to the end, B is measured in feet. T is measured in seconds. So feet per second. All right, what I want you to try is page 140, 153. Sorry, 153. It's, this is all odds, 1 through 7. 11 through 17, 21, and 25. And I also have a review worksheet, so I'll pass that out to you, and you can get started on it if you want to.